the show where we take various story arcs and events from comics and we cover them. I'm your host, Obi-Wan Jabroni. Now, our story today will be Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters Prologue Chapters. Now, this is a story that takes place in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, more leaning towards the end of that gap there into Return of the Jedi, and it acts as a prologue chapter for an upcoming event of the same title. And with that, let's talk nerdy. We open things up with War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha, written by Charles Soule, with arts by Steve McNiven, and colors by Laura Martin. War of the Bounty Hunters Prologue 1, Part 1, Precious Cargo. Boba Fett, the galaxy's most dangerous hunter, claims the bounty of notorious smuggler and rebel officer Han Solo. Jabba the Hutt eagerly awaits Fett's delivery of Solo's carbonite frozen body to Tantooine, where the crime lord will extract his vengeance. Han Solo's debt is thus paid. But Boba is desperate for a payday himself. Now, we open up on Boba's ship, the Slave One, and Boba is on comms with Bib Fortuna, who is Jabba's second in command. And he's telling Bib that he for sure has Han, and yes, he's alive and frozen in the Carbonite. And while they're talking, an alarm on the Carbonite, whatever it's called, the Carbonite container, um, starts to go off. And Boba notices that a section of Han's hand that's up against the carbonite is starting to fade, and something's wrong with the containment unit. And he starts murmuring that nothing's ever simple. And at that point, we switch over onto the smuggler's moon of Nar Shadda. And Boba has taken Han to a carbonite doctor, a specialist on carbonite. And. Sorry. And the doc tells them that, you know, the carbonite matrix is unstable because of the organic tissue inside. And he can fix it, but only if he is paid up front. Or if Boba takes care of somebody at the arena for him. Now, Boba agrees to take out the champion at the arena. And he approaches, and his armor is completely blacked out. He has everything head to toe black. All wires, all buttons, everything. And he goes up to the pit attendant, and he registers under the name of Django, who is his daddy for you who don't know. Now, at this point, we get a real cool montage of Boba just slaughtering numerous people and making his way up through the ranks. We see him blowing off heads and throwing spears through people's chests, decapitating people, blaster shots to people's foreheads, flamethrowers, a little bit of everything within his repertoire. And... He finally makes it to the main event, so he has to fight the pit champion, Wyman Licker. Now, she's this crazy-looking spider lady, humanoid, spider, hybrid. <coughs> and uh, she's wearing white armor, and she carries two blaster rifles. Now, Boba starts the fight by instantly taking off with his jetpacks, and he shoots his armada of wrist missiles right at her, and they start exploding around her. She dodges every one of them and shoots some webbing out at him, and it latches onto his jetpack, and she yanks it, ripping it from his back and sticking it to a nearby wall. He falls to the ground, and as he tries to get up, she approaches and shoves one of her spiked spider legs right through his shoulder and pins him back to the ground. And he reaches over and he pushes a button on one of his gauntlets. Now, over on the wall, the jetpack beeps, and all of a sudden, it explodes, sending the wall falling down and crushing the champion. Blood sprays everywhere. And we switch back to the doc's lab. Now, he's sitting there, and he's studying over Han. All of a sudden, all we see is a shadowed figure and a blaster come out of the corner of the room and kills the doctor. And some... Nobody grunts. We don't really get to see any of them, but they all look kind of the same. Come and they steal Han's body from the lab. And Boba returns victor champion of the arena now. He's done it, so he's about to get this done for free. All he had to do was go kill some people. Comes natural to him. <clears throat> Comes natural to him. And he walks in and he finds the doctor dead. He immediately calls him, calls Jabba to tell him that he has Han, but he will be late. 
And that ends the first issue of War of the Bounty Hunters. And that takes us into our second issue, Star Wars number 13, written by Charles Soule. Art by Ramon Rosanos, and colors by Clayton Cowles. Now, War of the Bounty Hunters Prelude 2, The Hunt for Han Solo. The rebel fleet awaits word from the missing comrade Sara, Sara Bay, lost on Starlight Squadron's first mission. And Han Solo, frozen in carbonite, and in the hands of the infamous bounty hunter Boba Fett. A friendly signal from the Imperial Star Destroyer of Tarkin's Will reaches the redemption in the middle of the night. Sara is alive, hiding in the depths of the ship and gleaming information about the Imperial system. But the Rebellion still seeks Boba Fett and his cargo. Now, we open up and Luke is in the, on one of the ships in the Rebel fleet. They're just out in the middle of deep space somewhere, nowhere in particular. And he's training with numerous training drones. There's about 15 of them. And he ignites his lightsaber. He starts jumping around the room, deflecting bolts, blasting them into walls, and destroying them all. When he's interrupted by C-3PO, Chewie, and R2-D2. And they tell him that Boba Fett's been spotted in Nar Shaddaa, And they leave immediately to try to catch him and find Han. Now, when they get to Nar Shaddaa, they're greeted by a Wookiee. Named Sagwa, and she works as one of the guards at the pit arena, and she says she might be able to help find Boba. So they start going around the pit asking various people if they had seen him or any information at all about him. And while they're talking to one of the ticket tellers, they are confronted by the Nar Kashnani, and it's one of the Hut Clan gangs. And the leader assumes, since they're asking so much about this Boba character, who he calls Django still, that they're his friends, and that he cost them a lot of money killing their champion, and he owes them, and they're not going anywhere until they find out where he is. They appoint all their blasters at him and say, tell us where Django is now. <clears throat> and Luke ignites his lightsaber, saying he's no friends of Django. They just want to find him. Now let me through. I don't want to hurt anybody. The whole gang immediately erupts into blaster bolts and starts firing on them. Luke starts deflecting bolts, hitting two of the gang members and knocking them out. And allowing C-3PO, Chewie, and Sagwa to get into cover in a nearby wall. Now, Chewie is pissed and he lets out a big roar and starts unleashing a flurry of bolts from his bowcaster into the crowd of gangs, taking out many of them. Now, while this is going on since they've took cover, Sagwa has been slicing a door, and she finally gets it open. And they all run through the door, sealing it behind them. And they start running down a hallway, and when they reach the end of it, they come out into the front of the building, confronted by a whole army of gang members that are sitting there, weapons aimed and ready to blast them away. Now, Luke tells everybody to move and flicks up his hand, causing one of the gang members' land speeders to go flying through the crowd, knocking over and distracting many of them and flying up to them. They all jump in and jump and fly, uh, jump in and try to get away. Now, they get away and they're dipping and dodging through alleyways and they finally escape and make it back to the Millennium Falcon and get the fuck off Narshida. Now, when they get back on the ship, R2 tells them that they got a transmission from Leia while they was gone, saying that they received a coded message from the, an unknown source, claiming to have the body of Han Solo. And that ends our issue. And that leads us into Bounty Hunters number 12, written by Ethan Sachs, with art by Pablo Vanelli. And colors by Arif Peranto. War of the Bounty Hunters Prelude 3. Target Solo. Cyborg bounty hunter Valens recently rescued a stranded rebel freighter from marauding pirates. And Dangar let it slip that the notorious Boba Fett captured Valens' old friend Han Solo. The two rival hunters have come to an understanding in order to find Fett. Valance now tears through space in the stolen vessel, de desperate to pick up the trail before it's too late. Now, we open up things on Valance's ship, right outside Narshadar, still in space. 
And Dengar and Valance are talking about how they're going to get into Fett without getting killed themselves, when an alarm goes off alerting them of approaching ship trying to hail them. Now, in the ship is four LOM and Zuckus, two other bounty hunter duos. And they say that there's a bounty out on Valance, dead or alive. And uh, Valance ignores them completely. He don't want anything to do with it. He just kicks it up and starts flying faster. And Dangar says for him to give up and asks why so Solo is so important while pointing a blaster at the back of Valance's head. Valance simply says, I have my reasons. And we flash back to Abrogado Ray Spaceport years ago, and we see Valance talking to a group of men, who we find out to be the Covenant's Thorn Gang. And he's trying to get a bounty from them. Now, they agree to hire him if he survives, and the leader snaps his fingers and security rushes the room and they leave. Now, the gang leaves and the security swarms over Valance, and he whoops all their asses with ease, and it sends us back into the current timeline again. Now, Valance tells Dangar to put down the rifle and hang on as he starts to maneuver into an asteroid field to lose 4LOM and Zuckus. <clears throat> now, the escape isn't working. Zuckus and them are keeping right on his ass, and Dangar gets pissed and smashes the butt of his rifle into Valance's head. And it sends us back to the past yet again. Now, Valance gets this job. He obviously got the job. He beat all of them with ease. And he's setting up a sniper point with another gang member to find the described target who's supposed to be standing talking to the dockmaster below. And as he raises his scope to find the target, he sees them and realizes that his target is Han Solo. And it sends us back. Back to the current timeline again. Lots of jumping back and forth between these two in this story. And Dengar's getting on comms. And he says he has a better deal for them if they leave him alone. And it sends us back to the past yet again. Now, Valance takes aim. But instead, he shoots the Dockmaster, causing a distraction. And Han realizes that there's people there. And then he turns and starts attacking the gang member, saying he can't let him kill Han. Valance tackles the gang member over the railing down to the blow again, falling down and landing right in front of Han. Han recognizes him immediately and asks why he tried to kill him, that Han saved his life once before. Now, this happens in a miniseries that came out a few years ago called Han Solo Imperial Cadet. And he rescues Valance when they're both Imperial cadets together at the Imperial Academy. <clears throat> anyway, Chewie grabs Han and starts dragging him off to the Falcon while he screams, I saved your life, Valance. Why? Why? As they get into the Falcon and, try and leave, Valance stands up and just says he's sorry. Back in the current timeline, Dengar tells 4LOM and Zuckus about the bounty that Jabba put out on Boba Fett for losing Han Solo. And that they better hurry because every bounty hunter in the sector is bound to heard of it by now and will be gunning for Boba themselves. And that ends our issue. And that takes us into our final issue. Darth Vader number 12. Written by Greg Pack. Art by Ginu Villanova, and colors by Dean White. War of the Bounty Hunters Prelude 4, Into the Trap. Emperor Palpatine finally revealed to Darth Vader the mere glimpse of his powers on Exegol. It was enough to make Vader kneel before his master once more. Vader is beginning to understand the full scope and might of the Emperor's plans for the galaxy. Now Vader's own plans must also change. And... We open with Vader landing on a dock in Coruscant, and he goes to get suit repairs because he got kind of messed up in his last mission on Mustafar. And he lays on the table and starts meditating while the repairs are being done. And we get a montage of various encounters he had with Luke throughout the whole New Hope story arc. And still meditating and in the past, we go to Corellia. 
and a Rodian's walking down the ramp of the Millennium Falcon, saying that repairs are done. But Vader meets him at the bottom of the ramp instead of Han. And he ignites his saber, instantly killing the Rodian. And Han and Chewie are walking into the room, and they see this, see and hear Vader kill him. And they start off towards the Falcon and take the fuck off, escaping into a group of other Corellian fighters that are in the area. Now, it goes over and we get another montage of the events of Cloud City from Empire Strikes Back. Vader awakens on the repair table, and he silently grabs the assassin Ochi and takes him away and leaves the planet with him. And that takes us out to somewhere in the outer rim. Ochi approaches a hut named Boku, telling him that they are to find Solo and give him to him personally, not Jabba. Boku laughs, calling him a fool, and says he doesn't believe that he serves the Emperor. Ochi smiles and says he doesn't. I serve Lord Vader, and now so do you. And out of the shadows, Vader ignites his saber. And that ends the War of the Bounty Hunter prelude chapters. Now, technically, there is a fifth prelude chapter in Dr. Aphra number 10, The Invitation. But the whole issue is just a wrap-up of her current story arc that she was participating in and has nothing to do with the actual War of the Bounty Hunters except for the very last two pages where Sansa Staros and Dr. Aphra are on their way to a party that invitations have been sent out for, and the only thing we know about it is that it's the opportunity of a lifetime. Other than that, we're just going to skip this issue, and we'll deal with Dr. Alpha's story in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed this story, and join us next week where we talk about the X-Men Hellfire Gala event. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you feel like it. Feedback is always welcome. You can also find us on the Facebook page, Jabroni Nerd Network, or on Twitter, at Jabroni Nerd. Join us next week, and remember guys, stay sweaty, and keep talking nerdy. Thank you.